Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, Offshore Week here at Angler. Uh, very excited today. Uh, we have Brandon Carter with Fathom Offshore. Uh, we're going to talk about lures, how to rig them, how to run them, what to choose. They've got a lot of options, a lot of really good options. And so it can be kind of challenging to kind of decipher what's best to run in your spread. So, uh, Brandon, I want to welcome you to the video. And uh, we're, we're really glad that you guys have uh, joined us today. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. We really appreciate it. Uh, it's always been a pleasure working with you, Rich, and uh, you've been a great customer for a long time. So really happy that you invited us. Yeah, as you as you mentioned, we've known each other for a while now and uh, been selling the Fathom product uh, for quite some time. And I, I absolutely love it. There's no question about it. One of the best companies on the market, if not, in my opinion, the best company for lures. Um, you guys do top notch quality with with everything you do, the rigging, the quality of the product itself. Um, so I'm really looking forward to going through all of this and uh, and showing our customers why they should be running some fathom in their spread. So, um, you know, yesterday we had uh, live bait and dead bait rigging with Captain Jeremy Blunt and uh, his mate Bobby. And, uh, you know, we do run a lot of bait in the spread and there are times to run both or some all lure or some all bait. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, we're, we're going to focus on lures today. And uh, so, like I said, it can be a daunting task choosing the right lures or or combination of stuff in your spread just looking at the wall behind you there you got a heck of a presentation um, of different stuff so why don't we start talking about um, let's talk about the history of fathom um, where, where did you guys get your start how long you guys been doing this uh, well this is our tenth year uh, officially selling lures to the market uh, we got started a little bit before that just tinkering with them you know making some in the garage uh, selling them to friends, selling them to tournament boats, giving some away, just, you know, fishing them ourselves. Um, you know, really just trying to make a hobby or turn a job in, you know, from a hobby into a job. Basically we were just always real excited about fishing, always looking forward to the weekend. And, uh, used, we used to do construction, both myself and my partner, Andy, that started the company. And, uh, you know, we just kind of started out with just making a few, uh, making them in the garage, like I said, and, and rigging everything. And and then uh, started selling to a, a few customers, a few stores. Uh, we started selling to you pretty early on. And, um, you know, we're based out of Wilmington, North Carolina. So we have a pretty good area to test stuff. We uh, send lures a little bit everywhere. But, you know, out of North Carolina, we have a great blue marlin fishery, uh, a great springtime dolphin and, and tuna fishery. And pretty much, you know, depending on the season, we can catch a little bit of everything. So we're in a great location to test stuff. Uh, we're just trying to perfect our craft. We're, like I said, we've been doing it for 10 years. And every day we're trying to make a better product. We're trying to make new products, trying to innovate what's what we already make. Uh, you know, just making it an evolution to the next best thing. So that's a little bit about us. And like I said, we're, we're based out of Wilmington. We hand make everything here. And in a few minutes, we'll go back to the shop and, you know, start playing at the rigging table and showing you guys some stuff. Very cool. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, you know, I've got some of my fan favorites, uh, lures that, that, that I personally like to run. Um, but you guys do make a, a quite an assortment of lure styles, the head styles and uh, yeah. lots of different color combinations. So um, why, don't we, uh, why don't we get started with talking about lures? Why don't we uh, take a, a hike back into the, the workshop there? That sounds good. That sounds good. And the answer, you know, you said earlier, it's hard to pick just one. Well, that's, you know, the easy, the easy answer is just pick one of everything and then you're covered, you know, no matter right. what day it is, you're covered. So just pick one of everything and then you're good to go. So I like but it. Well, uh, just follow me back to the warehouse real quick. Um, there's a drink machine in case you get thirsty. Just going to show you real quick. Our uh, pouring room here. We got uh, Mark is our, our main lure crafter over there. He's, back here working on some inserts right now we get uh our shell from hawaii we have custom dyed shell and then we uh, make all of our own molds with uh aluminum masters and then we use a, a vacuum pressure system to uh, suck all the bubbles out then we got a couple of ovens so i hope nobody listening to this is going to start a lure company tomorrow because I don't, I don't need any more competition than what I already got, but, uh, <laughs> but no, it's, it's a, it's a really cool process. And, uh, as you can see, we just, you know, start from scratch and work our way up from there. 
then we'll uh go back out here to our uh to our rigging side so basically on any given day we're rigging a couple hundred lures we're um these are these are lures that are fresh out of the pot here and we're going to go through some of the shapes and styles here in just a second but basically depending on the order we just um every week we're making new product there's not a whole lot that's sitting around we're uh basically constantly making some new product to uh to go out the door uh i don't know where you want to start but we can start with some basic head shapes if you want to well let's start with the big stuff and move down i think that would probably be easier you know the, the, the big stuff we're going after big blue marlin usually with them um you know we'll, we'll kind of work from there and then you know we're fishing in the mid-atlantic so Blue marlin, white marlin, tuna, wahoo. Let's talk about them all. So uh, let's let's start with the big boys. Let's go after a blue marlin. What 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 do you have in the spread? Well, uh, blue marlin's definitely you know my my favorite as far as what to fish for and what to make lures for. I love large lures. Uh, this is just a sample of some of the different styles and shapes we make. Uh, but on a general fishing day, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with couple different head shapes to begin the day with just to kind of see what's working see what the fish are attracted to and I'm gonna start with just the most basic so you know start with just a plain flat head the nice thing about a flat head is you can basically put it anywhere in the spread uh, front to back you can put a flat lure anywhere so it's kind of a good fill-in um, I'll maybe change the colors throughout the day but the whole day I'll be running one of these pretty much in the spread okay Next, we're going to go to what's considered to be a traditional plunger style. Uh, I'm not sure who came up with the term plunger, but basically it's a slant face lure. And we make a couple different slant faces. We got like one that's barely got a slant to it to one that has a very sharp slant to it. And what that's going to do is when that's being pulled, it's going to run up on the surface more, put out a little bit bigger splash. Uh, could, it could uh, resemble a feeding tuna where it's coming up on top eating bait. But this is going to be your kind of your top water bait where it's going to come up and run a lot and kind of skitter. Uh, these, you're going to need a little bit of line elevation. So I would run one of these out of the riggers. Uh, it's a great long rigger bait. You could run it short rigger too. Uh, just kind of depends on your mood or how rough the conditions are. But generally speaking, a safe bet is a long rigger for a slanted head. Uh, next, I'm going to go to a jet head. <clears throat> this, is a, this is our chain smoker. And basically, it's got four jets in it. And what I like about this is, whether it's below the surface or above the surface, it's putting out a massive bubble trail. So if you want something that's really going to get some attention, uh really get some like even if this lure doesn't get hit it's a great teaser because it just has a huge bubble trail the other nice thing about this one is you could pretty much put it anywhere um short rigger is good you don't have to have as much line elevation but um it's a good all-around bait that you could put it's just pretty much anywhere as well nice uh i'm going to go back to a flathead for one second so earlier i showed you this one this is our pebble grande. So this is a little bit shorter, a little bit fatter diameter. This one, I'm going to run it up closer to the boat. So I would run that one either flat line or, uh, or a short rigger bait. This one's going to have a lot of splash to it. Runs beautifully in the water. You could put it left side, right side. Uh, but as far as just a tried and true marlin lure, we probably get more bites on this lure specifically than, than any other lure I got. I mean, it, oh. every year we sell the most of this lure. It's the most um, referenced as far as Fathom. When people think of Fathom, they have seen this lure a lot. So um, definitely get you one of these. This is a Pepple Grande in our uh, Liquid Dolphin series. So it's got a little bit of a blue tint to it. And it's got that beautiful mahi shell on it. Yeah, that's a pretty one. I know I have a few of those in my spread. Now, now I'm going to go a little more aggressive. <clears throat> so... You'll notice both of these have uh, a slanted face, and then both of them have a little bit of a bubble to the to the shape of them. Now, these are what I'm going to consider to be more aggressive. This would be something you want to run up closer to the boat. It's going to get a lot of attention. 
uh, you could see that in the prop wash. You know, it's going to have that much uh, splash and that much action to it. This one specifically kind of digs down. The bubble makes it kick a lot. Um, you can run it as a teaser even, but, I mean, you definitely, this is a good size to put uh, a hook set in, of course, but you could run it as a teaser if you were on a smaller boat. This one, same theory, a little bit less splash, a little bit less aggressive. You could run this one maybe short rigger, uh, whereas this one maybe flat line, this one a short rigger bait. But generally speaking, when I say aggressive, anything that's got kind of a crazy shape to it, I'm going to consider that aggressive, and I'm going to run that closer to the boat. Whereas simpler shapes or just basic round shapes, <clears throat> you could put those further and further back from the boat, and they'll run just fine. And so that would lead me to the to the opposite of an aggressive shape would be like your bullet shape. Now you could run uh, your bullets pretty much anywhere, but of course you know most people consider those a shotgun bait, and I would too. So if you were blue marlin fishing uh, out of Ocean City, this would make a great shotgun bait. It's a good size uh, rigged. It's about 12 inches long. Um, so that's kind of the different shapes that we would use in a typical blue marlin day. Sure. And for those not familiar with the term, shotgun being straight down the middle of the boat. You know, if you've, if you've got a big enough boat that has a, a, a center rigger, great. If not, we're just running off a rod, maybe off a tee top or something. It's right. just way back, kind of pretty much back behind the rest of the spread. Yeah. And, and if, you're, if you're a center console, let's say you uh, put some money into the Ocean City tournament, you want to fish it. You've got just as good a chance as anybody. I mean, you really oh, yeah. do. Um, and I would run a five lure spread all day long, whether I was on a small boat or a big boat. So, uh, you know, some white marlin guys, they're going to run a lot of lines. But if you're blue marlin fishing specifically, five lines to me is the magic number. It's less stuff to clear. Uh, you still got plenty of dredges or teasers in the water to attract fish. So you could easily run five lines off your center console. And, and yeah, that shotgun bait, just putting it right in the middle of your T-top, running it uh, pretty far back, you know, maybe 150, 200 yards back. And I, I, I really like your point. I agree with you. Those lures are big lures. And, you know, not all of us, whether we're on a small boat or a big boat, we're, we're not always typically running a full spread of 80s or 130s that we're going to be pulling big, giant lures like that. For the guys running either small boats or even just doing some smaller lure fishing with, with 30s and 50s, mm -hmm. having a few of these larger head lures on the boat just to run as a teaser. I mean, obviously, put a hook in them, but even if you just ran it as a teaser, they're really going to add to your spread. They're really going to help out help bring more fish to the boat. Well, and a really good spread that a lot of people don't think, a lot of people put the same size class in the spread at the same time. They're like, okay, I'm a blue marlin fish. I'm only running large lures but a really good method and let's say you were fishing like the white marlin um <clears throat> so you're kind of targeting both you know you're targeting blue marlin and white marlin so you could start with a um with a teaser up close to the boat and basically gradually work back to some medium head shapes we've got a lot of really nice medium head shapes that uh Traditionally, I've caught a lot of white marlin on our medium head shapes. Now, you know, most people think of just circle hook fishing for white marlin, but if you were just kind of doing a combination, I would just run bigger lures up close to the boat and work my way back to mediums and maybe even like a, a potentially a small back in the, in the shotgun position. Right. There's nothing wrong with that because the marlin is going to eat what he wants to eat. He may even hit us, you know, a smaller lure, but generally the blue marlin, I've, you know, most of the time they're going to run up and hit the big lure that's right behind the boat. That's just kind of a nine times out of 10. That's what's happening. So, but your, you know, your white Marlin, they're going to feed more on this size class right here. So I would mix it up and run a little bit of both. Yeah, I agree. I, I definitely like that theory of having an assortment out there. Cause you just, I mean, it's offshore fishing, it's fishing. You never know what's going to happen. You know, it's, it's a grab bag. Anything can come up. So we've talked about a couple of the bigger lures for blue marlin. We've started talking about white marlin. Why don't you highlight some of the head shapes that you have for that medium-sized class that would work well for marlin and even kind of integrate it into a white marlin to tuna kind of category? Sure, sure. So along that same lines of the head shapes, we, we make most of the head shapes from small up to extra large. So 
Uh, when I'm thinking of tuna and white marlin fishing, I'm definitely thinking that medium size class range. And then even into uh, our smaller range. So we've got, this is considered our small class here, whereas we have an extra small class as well. These are dynamite springtime when you have dolphin and tuna running at the same time. Uh, these are just dynamite lures for those. As you'll notice, this one has a little cup face to it right here. Uh, cup face, you can put just about anywhere in the spread. It's going to have a big pop when it comes in and out of the water, puts out a nice bubble trail. You got a flat face. Again, you can put it anywhere. It's a little more, less aggressive. You know, it's just going to have a nice methodic swimming action to it, but you can put it anywhere. So I would really highlight to your customers in that area if they're going out for a general meat fish day, white marlin are biting too, but your basic summertime uh, everyday spread would be a great mix of extra smalls and smalls. They run real easy. You could run these on 30s. You could run them on 50s. Uh, these you can even, even run on 25s. I mean, so it doesn't have to be very heavy gear uh, to run these size right here. And I'm going to move over to another type of product we make which is a soft head chugger <clears throat> this is a little rig soft head chugger here now this one's rigged for meat fish but this is very popular setup for uh, for white marlin fishing as well so a lot of times what i'll do when i'm searching for fish at the beginning of the day you know i don't know what color is going to work best that day i don't know whether a lure is going to work better than maybe having some natural bait so these little chugger heads, you can pull these at the same speed you would these small lures. So I would pull these, you know, this combination between like five to seven knots. But this is a really good combination to look at is maybe having a few chugger heads with some ballyhoo and running a few extra smalls or small lures. Nice. One thing we didn't talk about yet is, uh, <clears throat> is teasers. And I'm going to kind of work my way from small to big. So... You know, in that same category where we're talking about chuggers and extra small lures, uh, chains are really nice to add a small lure to it. Tuna love chains. They love stuff that has some flash to it, some, some uh, I call it uh, splash and flash. You want some splash going on. You want a beautiful flash of color. Um, and chains are a great way to get that. So we make two different types of chains. We have a, a soft bird chain. Then we'll put lures behind and then more of a straight running uh, squid looking chain. And we'll put lures behind both of these because the nice thing is with something like this is if you're on a small boat, you can't have, you know, two chains out and a, and a dredge. You can run this stuff and you got hooks in it and it works kind of as a combination of a teaser uh, and, a, and a, you know, bait at the same time. Nice. Nice. I like that. So, um, you know, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is, is the rigging. So you guys offer a lot of your product pre-rigged, ready to go right out of the box, which I think is, as a retailer, it's really great. As an angler, it's even better. I don't have to second guess any of the stuff that you guys do. Um, you know, I've been selling offshore stuff for quite a while now, and I can't tell you how many products from other manufacturers that have had to re-rig in store for a customer because it just wasn't up to par. So, um, why don't you talk a little bit about your rigging process and kind of the way that you guys go about it? Well, uh, you brought up a really good point. So like one of the number one reasons that we started making our own tackle was anything I bought pre-rigged from a store, which just junk usually like, you know, you buy it and the, and the coils would be all squished in the packaging. You get it out and it's got a lot of line memory or the crimps aren't nice and tight or the hook set, you know, it not up to quality. So from, from start, from the time we started till now like that's been a big key is like it don't matter how nice the lure is if the rigging ain't good you're just gonna miss fish or you're gonna break fish off so um one thing we try to do is from our smalls up to our marlin lures is we really want to make sure that they are um you know tournament ready basically i don't know if you're fishing a tournament or whether you're just going out on a beautiful saturday so uh i'm gonna open up one that you know just the way we would sell it here so um like this small here we use 150 pound premium mono we've uh we've got a stainless steel hook set 
pull that out real quick. So we've got a stainless steel hook set. And um, <clears throat> sorry about the packaging being attached there. Like I said, I was going to show it to you just the way it comes packaged. Uh, right. Basically, so straight out of the package, it's ready to fish, whether you're fishing a tournament or you're fishing just on a Saturday. So um, one thing I was going to mention to you was the way that we um, – rig like our mediums and our, our larges. So if you buy a pre-rigged medium from us, we're going to wrap the uh, connection with a little bit of emergency tape. And what that does is it makes the hook set nice and stiff. So if the fish comes up and swats at it, it's not going to like completely just, you know, fall to the side. So in the mediums and large, we do that. In the smalls, we actually don't do the, uh, the tape. Reason being, like for tunas and dolphins, most of those are suction feeders. So they come up behind the lure and they come up to eat it. They kind of come up and make a, you know, suck the lure into its mouth. So that one, we want the hook to fall into its mouth. When I get into the bigger game stuff, the mediums and the larges, the reason we do it with the, uh, I'll pull this out and show it to you. <clears throat> the reason we do it with the tape is so that that thing stays stiff. And so if a marlin does come up and wax at it, it's not going to just completely flop out of the way. You hope that it's going to kind of sting back and hit them and catch them somewhere. So that's the theory behind taping those. And then, of course, it does give you the benefit of, uh, if you were running like a slant head, you would want to run, like let's say this is your slant here, you would want to run that hook to where it makes a kill. I've got a hook set right here. So basically... You would want to run the hook up and down to make a kill out of that hook, out of that rig. So, um, so that's another reason you might would want to tape a large lure. Yeah, and you guys put those those uh, those rubber stops. You put those on all of your lures. Those uh, right. rubber stops there. Yeah, we call we call that a hook lock, so that it okay. locks your hook where you want. So that's a hook lock. Yep, we put that on there. Uh, we also put chafe tubing on there so that when your line, you wouldn't think that it would, but even this plastic of the lure can chafe your line. So yeah. we put tubes in there. It just gives it an extra, when your lines, you know, you got a fish on, it gives you a little extra protection there. Um, we put, um, let's see if I got one here to show you. We got, we put chafe tubing on the cable of all the stainless hooks. Now this one particularly isn't uh, coated yet. So we would put, the uh this is heat shrink tubing right here rich so <clears throat> what you do is when you get done rigging this you slide that on cover up your connection but i just kind of wanted to show you guys like you know we use really high quality stainless and really high quality um uh, crimps so it's you know from start to finish from the front of the lure to the back of the lure you're going to have a good premium quality hook set and lure com combined well, it's a, it's a good point that you bring up. You know, you, the attention to detail from Fathom is second to none. You guys build your hook sets. You, you rig the lures. You guys take the time to do it. And you're not putting electrical tape on these. You're, you're putting the rescue tape, like you said. You're using heat shrink tube. You're using the good quality stuff. So it's right out of the package. They're rigged ready to go. Yeah, and, I, and that's another thing I tell people, too. Like, if you're rigging it yourself, I've gotten away from the electrical tape just because when you take it back off, it's super sticky. It makes a mess on your hands. Electrical, the uh, emergency tape, you can actually take that off and, and actually reuse it if you want to. It doesn't leave any residue. You can take that same piece off and rewrap it if you want to. But, uh, but basically, you know, you get a fish on, generally it's going to pull that hook set out. When you get done fishing, you put the fish in the box or if it's a marlin, you release it. But basically, you could just stick that right back into the uh, the hook lock. Then. Now, most of the lures that you've showed so far all have single hooks in them. So what's your take on single hook versus double hook? When do you want to run one? When do you want to run the other? What's your preference on that? Um, well, as a general rule, all of the marlin fishing we do, we usually use a uh, single hook. Um, most of the captains I talk to, I mean, obviously I'm not fishing every day. I'm in here skirting lures every day or talking to you, you know, talking about new products. So, you know, we're really taking a collective advice from some of these tournament captains. And just by the numbers, the single hooks uh, tend to 
have a better hookup ratio than the double hooks. Um, I can't explain the difference of why that is, but that's that's the ratio of hooks of, of getting hooked up on the blue marlin. The single hooks work better all day long. Um, when it comes to wahoo, I'm just going to grab a few wahoo baits here. When it comes to wahoo fishing, I, I do like a double hook set. And the reason I like the double hook set is they're usually aiming a little higher on the bait. So if a wahoo comes in and attacks the eyes, I want to have that hook ready for him to get hung up on. It. So that is one spot where I do use double hooks. For the most part, um, if you're meat fishing, you know, wahoo and tuna, I would still run single hooks, but that's kind of up to personal preference. Some people like doubles better. But, um, but wahoo is definitely, I always use two hooks when I'm wahoo fishing. So since you have that lure there, uh, you know, we talked about blue marlin, we talked about white marlin, we talked a little bit about tuna. We'll, we can talk a little bit more about that in a minute with some of the other style lures that you guys have. But show us that, uh, that lure that you have there because uh, we carry those in the store. They are pretty dynamite. The, the rigging to those is pretty wild. Yeah, this is definitely our number one wahoo bait here. Um, We've had several people catch um, fish in the 90s and a couple fish over the 100 mark uh, nice. wahoo. And uh, so basically the way this is rigged is you've got a, a, five, uh, <clears throat> a five ounce brass head that's painted. You can actually reskirt these. This, uh, this head actually unscrews. And if you wanted to, you could retie the hair. So, if, you know, if you use this bait for a couple of years and hopefully it gets beat up real good, you could always retie the hair. It has two of our OC30 size skirts underneath of it. And each of these have a three ounce egg sinker in it. And then you have a 10 alt double stainless hook set. And uh, you'll notice this one has heat shrink over top of the connection there. That's to make this one extra, extra stiff. And it slides down over your uh, over your lure pretty easy too. So, um, so that's our torpedo lantern. It is fantastic for wahoo fishing. You can run it as a high speed bait. You can run it as a planer bait. So if you want to get it down low a little bit, you can do that. Uh, or even if you have a downrigger, you know, like you got a eight pound downrigger ball, you can run these off of a downrigger ball. Um, almost any time I go fishing. <coughs> any time of the year, I'm going to want to have a few baits that are running down if it's a general meat fishing bait. So this one is that bait that you can run it. Uh, you can run it subsurface, you know, 20, 30, 40 feet deep, however you want to run it. Um, if you want to high speed it, let me show you this. If you want to high speed that lure rich, I would recommend one of our trolling weights. This one's got a ball bearing swivel on one side. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to take the ball bearing swivel, hook it to the cable on your lure there, and then we have a shock leader. This is a 30-foot shock leader. It also has a ball bearing swivel on one end as, as well. So you clip uh, your rod, your swivel off of your rod to this end, hook this to your, uh, to your weight and your weight to your lure, and you're ready to high speed. I don't nice. know if high speed is very popular up there yet or not, but I mean, it's, it's all the rage down here. That's in the fall. That's all guys are doing. I'm sure it's only a matter of time. If people aren't already doing it, they're, they're going to learn about it. It's going to be the next hot thing. Well, it, it's so effective. And even if you're just like running from spot to spot and you just want to put out a few baits and run, you know, 15 knots to the next spot, you could just put out a few baits like this and you might pick up a Wahoo just on your way to the next spot. So, right. That's always a good theory. Or if you're slow trolling, like you're just going five, six knots, you could use this as your way to get your lure lower in the water column. So you could just use this setup just as like putting it on a flat line and just having that one lure, um, you know, down 20, 30 feet. Nice. So that's a nice option for that. We also have um, our next best Wahoo bait since we're on the Wahoo real quick. This is our Fat Boy. And our fat boy could double as a wahoo bait or a tuna bait. Now, we have it obviously rigged for wahoo fishing, but we make it in this beautiful glow head with glow skirts. This is a fantastic uh, tuna lure, especially bluefin tuna or big eye. 
uh, not as much on yellowfin. I mean, you could use it for that, but if you're if you're big eye fishing um, or it's in the fall and you're bluefin fishing, this is a great bait. It's an eight ounce head. It's a, uh, a lead head, so it's a real you know deep diving bait. Um, but we can rig this on mono or on cable, um, or you could even rig it with a horse ballyhoo behind it. So that's a that's a good option for this bait here. So. You know, this is a good bait to keep in your spread. I don't know if you have those yet at Anglers, uh, but that's a good option as well. I, I do believe we have a few of them on the shelf. Those are those are a good bait. I'm, I'm a big fan of those. I like having those deep baits. We usually run a lot of those deep baits as heavier baits like that uh, flatline position when we're tuna fishing. Like you said, kind of get it down, get it just past that prop wash. Um, and and I, I have physically seen tuna just comes swiping right past the back of the boat and just nailing those yeah. baits they're they're pretty cool yeah no it's it's a great bait and uh i always try to just keep everything simple and you know one of the reasons i like lure so much is that it's it's for me i guess it's just not intimidating uh and you shouldn't let it intimidate you so like one of my number one tips is you know don't worry so much about well this lure ain't pulling perfect there or maybe should i move it there it's, it's less about the position than it is just trying. It is very uh, easy to lure fish. It's one of the main reasons that I try to push people. So, hey, man, just try a few because let's say, you know, it's Friday night. You don't have time to stop and get bait, but you got a lure bag with five or six lures. It is so easy to pull lures. You don't have to have everything perfect as far. I mean, I like scientifically to really dial it in, like which wave is it on or Am I pulling it just right? Really, most of my head shapes are so simple to use. You'll know if they're not running right. You might want to crank it up a few notches. Okay, does that look good? Or do I drop it back a little bit? The biggest thing as far as where a lure is going to run the best, Rich, is just in front of a wave. So I usually think of it as like first, second, third set of waves. If you just kind of look at those as you're trolling along, you just kind of see your, your wave pattern. You just want to get them right in front of those waves and just let them work because depending on the water conditions, if it's rough, a lure, you might need a little heavier lure or, or if it's real smooth, calm, you're going to want a lighter lure. So it has more action, but it, it just don't let it intimidate you at all because it is so easy to lure fish that, I mean, literally a monkey could do it. Now you want to keep dialing it in and that's, that's what I love to do. But as far as getting started with it, just pick some basic shapes because it's really so easy to do. Yeah, and you guys also make it really easy too. And a lot of those smaller lures in the packaging, you guys, that, that the packaging that's in there, that folded uh, piece of paper actually has diagrams on kind of like a little starter guide on how to run stuff. So for the guys that are new to lure fishing, uh, you definitely want to check one of those out in the package when you guys stop by the store. Um, so we, we talked about a couple of different style heads. We talked about the different sizes you guys carry. There's there's tons more to talk about, but let's, let's focus in on those uh, skirted lures again. You guys obviously do a lot of skirting there. We see the wall of skirts behind you. Um, it's pretty easy to do, but you can you can tear some skirts if you're not doing it right. So you guys got any tips or suggestions on how to reskirt a lure if I've got a, an old head that needs uh, some refinishing? I would, I would love to show you that. And in fact, I've got uh, one of our professional riggers over here. His name is Josh. Josh is our warehouse uh, manager on this side. Say hey, Josh. Hey, everybody. Hey, Josh, welcome <laughs> to the program. Awesome. He loves being on TV, too. He's like, please let me get on this seminar. I just got to get on there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, now I introduce Josh. Josh is going to rig one real quick for us. He's got a couple of baits over here. And, uh, yeah, so one thing you mentioned as far as is skirting. So basically, once you buy a lure rich, you can use that head for eternity. You can pass it down to your grandkids. The, the resin that we use is such a high-quality resin, you can run over it. You can throw it out the, the bus on the way to school, come back by and pick it back up because it's, it's not going to crack, fade, chip. But now it will, over time, get scratched. And I, we hope you get it scratched. You know, that's a beautiful sign when it's all scratched up. But uh, but you can re-skirt them a million times. So, you know, we hope you get out there and have some fun and tear up some skirts. So Josh is going to walk you through it real quick. He's got a large uh, calico there. Got my combo here, ready, already picked out. Now walk us through, like, how do you know where to cut that skirt at? See, what I go by is I take the skinniest part of that head, and I'll put it at the very bottom, top of your hook lock. Then I'll cut it at the top, or the bottom of the top. 
that makes sense. The bottom of the top saddle, I guess. Made sense to me. <laughs> yeah, hold, hold that up to the camera just a little bit more so I can see that there. Yeah. It's basically about half of the head. Yeah. Okay. That's where it usually ends up working out. And I'll take it and flip it inside out. And some people like to heat them up a little bit. I'll take a heat gun, turn it on it, and maybe just at least knock the cold off of it. Get a little more less elasticity. Well, he just mentioned that. Hardly anybody I ever talked to even knows about using a heat gun, Rich. You can use hot water, you could use a heat gun, you could use a blow dryer. But basically that uh, material we make it out of is meant to flex. So if you heat it up, it'll stretch and then shrink back down. So it makes a beautiful skirted lure if you heat it up first. Okay. And I'll use a little bit of furniture polish, give it a slick, work it around. I'll kind of work the hook lock in it a little. Basically twist it on. Take a little bit of 50 pound floss. So he's got 50 pound waxed rigging floss there. Do a couple of wraps, pull it tight. Do a couple of more. Pull it tight. And that's the inner skirt. Flip it back. So we do the inner skirt first, and you're about to see why we do that. Some people think you're supposed to put the outer skirt on first, Rich, but there's a trick to it. You put the inner skirt on first so that you can pull that outer skirt onto the lure easier. Gotcha. Cut this one the same way I cut the lower one, the inner skirt. And I'll feed the inner through the outer. Work it up. Kind of line my veins up where I want them to go. Pop it over. Now walk them through how you're tying this. Not really how to explain it, but I take the head, grip it with my left hand. I'll get maybe six inches, six, eight inches over, hang and hold it there. And I'll wrap over my thumb and around the lure head. Usually do two wraps, pull it tight. Two or maybe three more. Pull it tight. Then I'll feed what I've, my excess back through that loop I created with my thumb. I'll hold that tight and pull my other end until that loop disappears. And then I just maybe leave a inch hanging out so you can untie it if you need to. Flip that outer. Make sure your veins are lined up. You can usually twist them a little bit still after you time. Beautiful. Beautiful fish. That looks like a winner to Josh me. Does, yeah. Yeah, Josh does about 200 of these a day on a good day. Um, but it, it really sure. is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, his hands are like leather after a while. All that <laughs> waxed rigging floss on there. But, no, it's really easy to, to skirt them. Uh, we, we do have a skirting video, too, Rich. If, uh, <clears throat> if any of your customers want to learn how to skirt them themselves, uh, we got a little tip video they can watch, but it's it's really quick and easy. And that's one nice thing is like like I was saying, this resin head is is a lifetime product. So uh, and not just ours. I'm not just saying ours is the only one made out of good quality resin, but you do want to get a high quality resin because there's no point in buying a lure that's going to crack and fade and like be a piece of junk the next year. So whatever you do, buy a really nice high quality lure buy high quality tackle. I mean, you're taking the time, you're spending your, mon your money to go offshore. So you want to, you know, good quality product. Um, all the skirts you see here, we make those in house. Love to give you a tour of that sometimes, Rick, yeah. when, you, when you have a chance, but you know, just, just get good quality for, for what you're trying to, for what you're trying to get. So if you're buying offshore stuff, just start with good quality. You know, it'll cost you a little more on the front end to get nice lures, but once you get a pack of blue marlin lures, a pack of tuna lures, a pack of dolphin lures, you're pretty much set, you know, other than like changing it up every now and again. But after that, you've got your basics of what you want to go fishing. 
So we talked about the different lure styles, sizes. Uh, when you guys are, are rigging them pre-rigged, what kind of, what size leaders are you typically putting on your lures? Uh, you know, I mean, I think some of it coincides with the way we would rig a dead bait, but I think we do use a little bit heavier leaders here and there on some of those lures. Some of those lures get pretty big. So what do you guys usually recommend size-wise for leader? That's a great question, Rich. So uh, in our larges, you know, we may use a 350, to 500 pound range depending on how big of a class of lure it is uh, and how big of a class of fish we're chasing so if i was rigging up this you know huge beast right here i'm going to rig that on 450 or 500 that's a, a bit heavy i realize but if you're let's say you took a trip to bermuda and you're fishing for for granders you're going to want to really have some some heavy duty line whereas this bait here you know it's probably going to look best on probably a 350 or 400 when you go to the mediums, we use 250. Um, if I were tuna fishing specifically, and if I was only like yellowfin fishing, I might would switch to like maybe a, a 150 fluorocarbon, you know, dial it back some. But my everyday fishing with a medium, because I don't know if I'm getting a blue marlin or if I'm getting a tuna or whatever, I'm going to do 250 pound uh, leader. Uh, I will mention this is 12 feet of leader right here. There's a reason behind like different lengths and sizes, but <clears throat> 12 feet is a really good size. If you do get a marlin, you have enough room that you can kind of have a little bit of room to leader it at the boat. When we go to the bigger ones, we go to about a 20, uh, 22 foot leader. A couple reasons for that. Uh, again, when you're getting a marlin up close to the boat, you want to be able to have enough room to work that marlin at the boat. While he's still a little green, you want to have a little slack you know, there to a little bit of room between you and the fish. So we use a, a 22 foot there. Now, uh, I'm, I'm open to making it a different size for each shop. Like if you had, a, you know, guys that wanted 30 feet, we can do 30 feet. I wouldn't go over 30 feet because you're getting close to IGFA regulations of going over the line of what you're supposed to have. So a safe bet is always going to maybe 29 feet or anywhere between 22 to 29 feet. That gives you plenty of room to work a marlin and still stay under regulations for IGFA in, in most tournaments. Okay. And then uh, back to that little small lure I showed you earlier, we use 150 pound and we use eight feet of leader on this. The reason I like eight feet is if I put the rod in the rod holder, reel the fish up to it. Like let's say you got a 10 pound dolphin on there, 20 pound dolphin, whatever. You can reel that, the the uh, <clears throat> the swivel up to the rod tip and gaff it yourself if you needed to. Like I've done that myself. I just stick the rod in the rod holder, reel it up, gaff it yourself. Because eight feet gives you just enough room that your fish is still in the water. It's still at the rod tip. It's, it's a great working distance for meat fish. So you don't want it any shorter than that, though, because you don't want, you know, if you caught a bigger fish, you don't want it wearing a hole uh, in your leader with, with its tail. But that's a good size right there. And then when I go down to my extra smalls, I would use about 100 pound, again, about eight feet a liter on the extra smalls. Okay. Sounds good. Hey, we didn't cover dredges. Are you interested in dredges at all, Rich? Well, yeah, so that's the next topic is to talk about uh, some teasers and dredges. So well, let's go ahead and get started with, uh, let's talk about the dredges. Okay, great, great. I got, uh, I got a dredge here I think you're going to like. This is... Uh, a new, well, it's a newer dredge. We started making these probably, I guess, last year. Um, this is um, a combo dredge. Now, you'll have to forgive me. This one is a, uh, well, this is not the combo dredge, Rich. Just kidding. This is actually just our standard uh, purple dredge here. So this one's going to be a 36-inch frame on top, a 24-inch frame on the bottom. This one's going to be a little heavier duty frame. Um, on a small boat, you could get away with it, but you're going to have a little tough time when you set it down. Like when you go to set it down in your console at the back, it takes up a little bit of room. So generally speaking, I'd say this is going to be more for your, uh, little bit bigger boats. Uh, this one again, has got a 36 inch frame at the top, 24 at the bottom, and they actually spin independently so that the, the squid aren't tangling up on themselves. Nice. That's what I'm going to show you. I think it's going to be a perfect combination of just big enough, but having a lot of splash to it. <clears throat> so 
so this one is the one I thought I was getting out a second ago. This is the combo dredge where it has a combination of tuna flaps and a combination of squids. This I really like because it looks like a, a school of, of, uh, of bait getting eaten by the tuna. So you're going to attract other tunas. You're going to attract uh, blue marlin are going to come up try to eat these little tunas off of here. This is a great combination. This is something we started doing, I believe, I believe it was last year. It's been very effective on the tournament trail. Uh, this one, of course, is a pearl with a purple flap. Um, I highly recommend, if you're only going to buy one or two dredges, I would probably get something with purple. Purple seems to be a really hot seller. Um, gets a lot of attention from the blue marlin. And maybe a green, like a green dredge has done really well. But this little combination here is only 24 inches on the top, a 12 inch on the bottom, still spins independently, <clears throat> and you can set it down like that, doesn't take up a whole lot of room. So that's one consideration is, you know, how much room is it gonna take up on the boat? Now, of course you can, you know, fold it down some, and that's fine. But when you're getting it in and out of the water, you don't want it taking up your whole cockpit. So that's a good size for a small boat. You're also going to need something to weight it down. Now this is a coated fish weight that we make, Rich. And uh, this one's a six pound here. For something this size, you could get away with a four pound or a six pound. Um, <clears throat> if you had a six pound, that's going to be a little heavy if you were having to hand line it or if you were using it off of like a downrigger reel. That would be a touch heavy. You might want to go to a four pound for that or maybe even a big um, inline trolling weight like what we looked at before. You could use one of these like a 48 ounce. It's real simple and easy to use. If you are a real small boat and you don't have room for this, we do make a, uh, a 12 inch by 12 inch also rich and you could actually hand line the 12 by 12. So you could use you know, a system like this where you have uh, your trolling weight and a little 12 by 12 dredge behind it and you can make yourself or we sell them as well You can make yourself like a 30 30 35 foot line and just hook it to a cleat and you still get a little bit of extra action behind the boat Gotcha. Yeah, and I love those dredges that you guys build those small those smaller dredges You know a lot of the guys that we deal with our clientele They're usually running on smaller boats and they don't have a lot of room in that cockpit a lot of the center consoles are a huge craze right now and they they, they may have the length, but they don't have the beam that these bigger boats do. And uh, so space is definitely at a premium. So those smaller dredges work really well. And they're still very effective. They still work really well. Well, that's the key. Is like uh, ever since people started using dredges, I think South Florida claims that they started using them first for sail fishing. Um, you just cannot argue how, how effective they are. I mean, they just add more fish to your, to your uh, spread. So... If you're running them, whether you're, you know, mar marlin fishing or just plain meat fishing, at the end of the day, it is attracting more fish to your boat. Um, it is a little pricey, again, to get started in that. But, again, I just suggest buying stuff that lasts. Uh, like these that we use are strike point dredge frames. They're stainless steel. They've got really high-quality components. Uh, it's got a really nice swivel hub here that's not going to break on you. Yeah, you could buy a cheaper frame. But at the end of the day, this is not something you're cutting off and throwing away. This is something you hope is going to last you, you know, five, six years. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, again, that's, that's a frame that we make 24-inch top, 12-inch bottom. Um, I'd recommend you guys this size here or the 12-inch by 12-inch. Yeah, we have quite a few of those in different colors in the store in stock right now. Um, and, and another thing I like about it, it's small when you br bring it out of the water and put it in the back of the boat, but it's also very small in the bag. They come in bags, and those those high-quality frames, like you said, they fold, you can kind of bend them down. They squeeze into that bag pretty easily, so it's not taking up a ton of space when you're not using it. You put it back in the bag, stuff it down in the cabin, uh, or in a small hold somewhere. And, uh, you, you know, dredges are intimidating because they are big. Um, and it's also, you know, I think more and more people are starting to realize, you know, when these things first came out, I remember when dredges really became popular, everybody thought they were just for marlin. It was just for white marlin and sailfish. And, and you know, right. you could use it for blue marlin as well. And um, they work really well for tuna. Um, you know, and if, especially, like you said, if you're going to get into some of these uh, tournaments, there's more and more tournaments on the, on the circuit these days. 
Um, that's definitely going to help increase your chances of getting more fish behind the boat with better shots at them. Yeah, no doubt about it, Rich. I mean, that's <clears throat> all the tournament boats you see are running them for a reason. I mean, it's not yep. just to look cool. It's because it does raise more fish. Um, yeah. You know, different colors for different days may work better than others. But nonetheless, at the end of the day, you want to have a spread that attracts more and more fish to your boat. So, like, I look at it as your boat's the biggest teaser. And then the stuff you put right behind the boat is the next biggest teaser. So you want to have a dredge. You might want to have a couple of daisy chains hanging off the side. If you have room, you know, going with a couple of daisy chains. Uh, we make these in 6-inch, 9-inch, and 11-inch. Um, mm. If you have the room, I definitely recommend them. You don't have to run them. There again, if you were just going out for a meat fish day, you could run something small like that with a bait. But if you were in a tournament, I would try to run a couple of these too. So, you know, a couple of these, one off of each side maybe a green on one side, a pink on the other side, and uh, maybe one dredge if you can if you can swing that. Yeah, the, the old school daisy chains, definitely worth having in the spread. There's no question about it. Love running them between kind of like the flat line and the short rigger. Um, you know, we kind of, we, we call it like a bridge teaser, you know, even for the guys that don't have a bridge boat, um, you know, you run it right out of the rigger, straight back off a little an old reel or something. You don't have to use a pancake reel. You can just use an old uh, Penn Senator or something. Um, you know, with some heavy line and, and it makes it really easy to adjust those back and forth. But yes, I do believe it, it definitely helps bring more fish closer into the spread. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what, you know, that's what at the end of the day, that's what we're all trying to do. I mean, if I knew something was going to bring more fish into my spread, there is nothing, my paycheck would not hold me back from buying because all I care about is when I'm out there is bringing a few more fish close to the boat. So that's right. uh, definitely invest. Chain, chains are really inexpensive and they're super easy. So even if you don't have room for a dredge, <clears throat> you might want to get yourself a couple of uh, daisy chains. Like you said, a, a cheap reel is a great way to, to make a teaser reel out of it. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a, a little bit about our setup. Is there any other questions you had, Rich? Well, so we talked about lures. That was what this video was uh, intended to be. Um, I, I would like to briefly talk about some of the dead bait stuff that you guys have, though. We've learned how to rig them. But you guys make, uh, again, pre-rigged, high-quality um, uh, ballyhoo rigs that are out of the box ready to go. You guys carry some circle hook white marlin rigs that uh, are turnkey ready to go. So why don't you kind of highlight some of those real quick? Yeah, so I'll, I'll go back to this one for a second. So this one, again, is on a pin rig. So this one's your, your generic uh, ballyhoo rig right here. So you, you know, seven alt long shank hook, put it through the belly of the ballyhoo, you're running your pin through the, through the beak of the ballyhoo, and then you're running your spring over top of the pin. Now this is ultra simple, ultra easy. Some people want to you know, dial it in with something a little different. And that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. This is simple, easy to use straight out of the box. This makes it to where anybody can rig it up real quick. Now, moving over to white marlin fishing or cell fishing, um, you're going to want some circle hooks on fluorocarbon. <clears throat> this is this is some baits we sell here. Uh, actually, Josh, that we introduced you to earlier, he ties a lot of these. So this is going to come as a little six-pack, ready to go, fluorocarbon, um, Beautiful circle hooks. I believe, is this in um, the Adolf Mustads here? Yeah, I think that's the Adolf. Yeah. yeah. So, but basically what you're going to do with these is you want these running running up like that, <clears throat> and you're going to rig your ballyhoo with floss. Now, you're going to need to look at a different video for that to dial that in. <clears throat> but basically, these flathead chuggers are dynamite for, for working with a circle hook. Because what you do is when you run that ballyhoo behind there, a lot of people put a little swivel through the front. So you hook that little swivel there and your bait can sit there and freely swim uh, without being hindered by the hook. So when the white marlin picks that up, you know, it's running with it. Hopefully you got real loose drag. It's running with it. Gives you enough time to get them, uh, <clears throat> you know, get that hook turned around and set the hook. So, um, but these, we tie these in house. They're a beautiful little circle hook rig. They match up perfect with our flathead chugger. Um, people ask me, like, is it better to use a, a cupped chugger or is it better to use flat? I definitely recommend the flat, especially for the circle hooks, because when you get into the uh, into anything cupped, like a lot of people use cup chuggers, and that's okay, but the problem is you have a chance of that kind of binding up on there versus the flat. 
<clears throat> you know, it's smooth. It doesn't hurt anything. All right. Uh, we, do, we do sell these with a traditional uh, Ballyhoo setup as well. But, uh, but, by, but bar none, if you're, you know, white marlin fishing, get you some of these. These are a little four-inch flat soft head chugger. Um, you know, it's not a hard head. If they pick it up and drop it, they're not going to, like, you know, not come back around to it. They'll, chances are they'll come back around to it because it's a nice soft head. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of those circle hook rigs. As, uh, as we've talked about in the past, I, I've made those. Uh, I can't tell you how many circle hook rigs I've made for white marlin. Um, and, you know, what I like about it is uh, – not, not everybody likes to or even knows how to snell a hook. And so, you know, for a lot of the meat fishermen that we talk to, you know, they occasionally see a white marlin come in the spread or they decide they want to do a tournament and they're, and they're required to use a circle hook. So those are easy turnkey, ready to go right out of the package. So uh, we definitely carry those in stock as well. So, uh, well, that about wraps up the video. Um, I think we've covered all the topics that we intended to. So I, I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, Brandon. And all the people at Fathom, I want to uh, a huge thanks to you guys for joining and, and letting us take a little tour of the facility and uh, and helping us out with this. And uh, yeah, so that about does it. Yeah, thank, so, thank you so much for the invitation again, Rich. We really appreciate you guys. We appreciate you guys putting on this seminar. I think it's a fantastic idea. Uh, if anybody ever has any questions, they can call our office. Usually, myself or my partner Andy, happy to field any questions. Uh, obviously you guys got a fantastic selection over there. So if anybody ever has a question about what to pick up over there, I'd love to help you out. Uh, but yeah, we really appreciate your, uh, invitation to, to be part of it. And we glad to help any way we can, Rich. Very cool. Well, thank you guys very much. And, uh, uh, for our viewers at home, make sure you stay tuned, uh, for the rest of offshore week here at anglers. We'll be doing, uh, some more videos coming up. Uh, we'll be talking about line with, uh, Momoe. Uh, splicing hollow core to mono and uh, you know just kind of which lines to choose for which applications for the different reels that you might have um, and we'll also be teaching you guys how to kind of rig your boat so we've talked about all this tackle we've talked about rods and reels we've talked about lures all this stuff where do I put it all what do, what do I do how do I run it all um, so stay tuned for more videos to come and then of course our live panel it'll be coming up um, on Saturday February 27th uh, with some Captain Zander Ocean City where we'll be highlighting all kinds of different ways to go after these fish that we've been talking about all week. So thank you guys for joining and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys in the shop. Have a go. Good luck out there. Have fun. Mm -hmm.